to our lesson 65, I think we're in now today. Lesson 65. And lesson 65 deals with writing equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So more writing equations of lines, as you can see by our bell work. What is this uh, answer to number one? Point slope, right? The point slope form. Point slope form is correct. So this is point slope form because we got m is the slope and x1, y1 is the point on the line. What about number two? What's the correct answer to number two, Tati? The slope is negative 2 and y Right. So slope intercept form for that would be y equals negative 2x minus 5. So the slope is negative 2 and the y intercept is uh, 0, negative 5. Right? Okay. Um, number three, Cooper? Slope is three and the y intercept is zero, four. Yeah. So if you solve for y, you get y equals three x plus four. Because you add nine x to both sides, divide everything by three, you get y equals three x plus four. So again, uh, the slope is three and the y intercept is the point zero, four. All right? Well done. Good. All right. Now let's go uh, to number four. And um, Wadsworth, did you get that one? Did you get there? Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Do you have to use the point slope form to write this equation? No. Why not? Because they give you the slope and it gives you the y-intercept. Now, what do you have to be able to do in order to see that that information is given? What do you have to know? What a y-intercept is. In, in algebra, a y-intercept is defined to be the point where x is 0. So as soon as we see this x equals 0 value, that tells me that that is my y-intercept. So y equals 2 thirds x minus five. Did anybody do it using the point slope formula? It's okay if you did, probably because it says, yeah, number four. Yeah, if you if you did it using the point slope formula, it's okay. You just wasted a little bit of time. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. And that means Y minus negative five equals two thirds times X minus zero. And you're gonna get two thirds X from here. You're going to subtract 5 from both sides and get y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. All right? So more today, more writing equations of lines. But today, we're going to identify and write the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. All right? So we're kind of stepping into an application of writing equations of lines. So I do want to tell you guys, as many of you will be calculus students one day, that this skill is very, very, very common in calculus. You see questions related to this skill on the AP calculus exam. You see questions related to this skill on the ACT. Okay, probably within the next two days or so, we're going to be visiting that practice ACT again for some bell work problems. And you're going to see problems exactly like this on the ACT, what we're going to look at today. Parallel and perpendicular lines. The concept is important. So here's some concepts that we're going to look at, right? Just kind of some things that we've learned up to this point that are going to be important to this lesson. First of all, to write the equation of line, we will always, and you notice there's an asterisk there, use the what? Point slope form. If they give us the slope and the y-intercept, then we'll use that, all right? Unless the equation is asking for the answer in point slope form. But, you know, for, for the most part, this, that's going to be our go-to equation uh, that we're going to use. And the point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Right? What two pieces of information do we have to have to use the point slope form? We have to have a slope and a point. We don't need two points. If we have two points, we can use the two points to find the slope and then we can you know use one of the points but the point slope form is is uh, aptly named we need a point and we need a slope Nicholas parallel lines never blank because their slopes are blank 
They never intersect because their slopes are equal. Parallel lines have identical slopes and different y-intercepts, right? So if they are parallel, they're not going to intersect. And systems of equations of parallel lines have no solution because of that, right? But the key thing that we're going to be looking at from this fact is that parallel lines never intersect because their slopes are equal. Parallel lines have slopes that are equivalent. Very important. What about perpendicular lines? Their slopes are opposite. That's not enough. What do you mean by opposite? One's positive and one's negative. They're opposite reciprocals. Okay? That means they're opposite and flipped. Here's some example of perpendicular slopes. If a slope of one line is two-thirds, okay, then the perpendicular slope, that's the symbol for perpendicular, perpendicular slope is going to be what? Opposite and flipped. That would be negative 3 over 2. Okay. If we have one slope that is 2, for example, if our slope is 2, what's the perpendicular slope going to be? Opposite and reciprocated. So negative 1 half. Okay, so that's kind of a fact that we need to hang on to. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. They're also, uh, the product of perpendicular slopes is always equal to negative 1. That's another way you can test to see if slopes are uh, perpendicular. Their product will be negative 1. Okay, so here we're going to just determine if the equations represent parallel lines. How can you determine if any two equations, two linear equations, are parallel? Their slopes have to be equal. This line has a slope of negative 4 thirds. What's the slope of this line? It's going to be 3y equals negative 4x plus 6. It is kind of important to do this, right? Not 2. Um, to divide everything by 3 because we need to see if the two lines are indeed different. If they're the same lines, then they're not perpendicular, even if the slopes are the same. Uh, but these two lines do have the same slope. What's the y-intercept of this first line? 5. The y-intercept of the second line is 2. So they're different lines with the same slope. That means they are parallel. Yes, parallel. Okay. Good. All right. What about the this? This says write an equation in slope intercept form. You're gonna have to write this one down. You're not gonna remember this. I promise you won't remember this. And this is very, very ACT like. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line that passes through negative 1, 1 and is parallel to a line with the equation y equals 2x minus 1. Now, what are we going to use when we're given that set of directions? Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line. Point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. What do I need to use the point-slope form? I need a point, and I need a slope. It's pretty clear what the point is, right? That's the point. What's the slope? Why is the slope 2? Because it says it's parallel to this line. So I'm going to use m equals 2, y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus negative 1. And 
All right. Y minus 1 equals 2x plus 2. Add 1 to both sides, y equals 2x plus 3. Now that's a, an equation in slope-intercept form that passes through that point and is parallel to that line. A very common ACT question. Okay, what about this one? Determine if the lines passing through these points are perpendicular. Okay, so I have line L, or line 1, that passes through those two points. Line 2 passes through these two points. How do you determine if lines are perpendicular? The slopes are opposite and flipped, right? Opposite reciprocals. What's the slope of line 1? 0 minus 4 over negative 3 plus 5. That has a slope of negative 2. Right? So what do I need this other slope to be over here if they're going to be perpendicular? Positive 1 half. Let's see if the slope of line 2 is positive 1 half. This is also, by the way, guys, a straight off ACT kind of question. Negative 3 plus 2 over negative 4 plus 2. That's equal to negative 1 over negative 2, which is 1 half. So line 1 is perpendicular to line 2 because their slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay, good enough. These are just some ways that we can use the skills that were introduced in this lesson to answer questions. Also, also I've seen this question on the ACT before. It's not uncommon for there to be two or three questions on the ACT related to parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, uh, next example. Write an equation in slope-intercept form for the line that passes through negative 2, negative 3 and perpendicular to this line. What pieces of information do we have to have to write an equation of a line? We have to have a point and a slope, right? Because we're going to use the point-slope form. What's my point? That's easy, right? y plus 3 equals some slope times x minus negative 2, that's plus 2. So all I need is a slope. Where in the world am I going to find a slope? It's perpendicular to this one. What's the slope of this one? Negative 3. What's the opposite reciprocal of negative 3? Positive 1 third is correct. Okay. Y'all good? So distribute that. Y plus 3 equals 1 third X plus 2 thirds. I need to subtract 3 from both sides. What's negative 3 plus 2 thirds? She's right. Negative 3 is 9 over 3 if you get a common denominator. Okay. If you didn't get a common denominator, it's negative 2 and 1 third, isn't it? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Negative 2 and 1 third. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to just do mixed numbers, this is equal to negative 2 and 1 third, which changed to a fraction would be negative 7 thirds. 
So y equals one third x minus seven thirds. Okay. Y'all getting this? So this is just a different application of a previous skill. All right. Uh, use slopes of lines. Here's geometry application to this. Use the slopes of the line segments to show that this is a right triangle. Okay, if it's a right triangle, what does that mean? It has right angles, which means two of the sides are perpendicular. How do you show two sides are perpendicular? You show the slopes are the same. Now, we're going to count the slope here. Rise over run. What would that be? One, two, three, four, left one. That's negative four over one, right? That's the slope of LM. Slope of MN is we're going to rise one and run one, two, three, four. That slope is one fourth. These two numbers are opposite reciprocals, which proves that the two line segments are parallel, which proves that this is a right triangle by definition. Perpendicular, yes. I'm sorry, I did say parallel. All right, there's your homework. See, guys, we're going to continue to build on these skills from Unit 6 that were difficult.